Well, up to this point, we've been pretty much learning how to use the program and make things move and make things look good. In this section, we're going to go ahead and figure out how to actually get the animations you create out of the computer and into the formats that you want them to. You know, whether you're a professional coming to this program to use it for television, film, and video, web deployment, whether you're doing viral advertising campaigns, or just doing some stuff for fun, either for personal reasons or just to, to get stuff up on the web to do it. There are different ways to approach the export of your animation and approach your animation rendering with some of the tool sets that you have available to you in Anime Studio Pro. Now, we need to define a couple terms and then I'll throw kind of some broad brush strokes of ways to consider using these tools based upon where the files are going. If you've had lots of experience preparing video assets for television, film, and web, yeah, you might be able to uh, skip this first movie right here. But if you don't have experience to it, or you have experience in one media but not another, go ahead and just tag along while we finish out this brief little section before we get into the following movies, looking at some of the controls we have for rendering in Anime Studio Pro. The first term that I want to define is called lossy. When we work with animations, we make them smaller by using what are called codecs, and codec, spelled C-O-D-E-C, -E is short for compression, decompression. It's an acronym. And it's a special method, a special algorithm, that the softwares use to go ahead and make the files smaller so they transport more quickly, but then, when you view them, look a little bit better. Lossy compression schemes throw away information. It's kind of like JPEG files. I know you've all seen bad or low-res camera phone pictures where when you actually look at them and blow them up on screen, yeah, there's strange little square artifacts around and kind of bizarre colors that are functioning as halos around people's heads. That's a result of lossy compression. Sometimes it really doesn't matter. When you're going to something like YouTube, they've got their own compression scheme that uh, throws out a lot of information to keep the bazillion of movies that they get down to something a little more manageable. So if we've got a lossy compression, then we also have some compression schemes that are lossless. They don't throw away any information at all so that your files, when they're published, are at full resolution and just as pristine as they were when you first made them. There's times you do want this, and especially if you're going into video editing, there's times you won't even export the animation to an actual movie. You'll export it as sequenced files because it just is a little extra safety and allows you to do some things in pre- and post-production with it that you couldn't do if it was in a movie format, or at least not as easily. The last thing we'll take a look at is deciding how you're going to use your animation whether it's going to be on the web, in video, and what the parameters are that go around that. Alpha maps, or transparency, is the ability of like these icons right on the screen where you can see the background around them. That's because the file formats that they're in is carrying transparency information. There's times you do want that when you're working with your animation, and Anime Studio Pro allows you to export your animations with alpha information if you want to. There's times you may not, but there are times that you might, especially if you're compositing your animation over other footage in video editing programs, whether it's a consumer grade program or an actual professional program like Final Cut Pro or After Effects. Well, let's take a look at some real broad brushstrokes of format considerations. When you're working with video production, especially if you're going to be providing for somebody else to work with, always, always, always ask them their preference to receive the files in. For animations, usually, and most other types of uh, digital video capture or 3D rendering types of issues, video producers prefer to work with sequenced files. You can work with sequenced TIFF files, PNG files, or TGA files, and sometimes JPEG files. The reason TIFFs, PINGs, and TGAs are requested is that they can maintain alpha information. So that gives the video producer the ability to either use a background with it or not. Additionally, some video production, especially if you're working with animation, may actually want a movie 
And when we get into our next movie here, we'll look at the codecs that you might use with that to give them a lossless type of information to work with. If you're working with web movies, there's about a bazillion codecs out there that can be used. I'm mentioning two here that are the most popular for a variety of reasons. The H.264 format is becoming pretty much the standard. Most uh, movies are, and DVDs for high def television are distributed with H.264 formats. It's not as prevalent as VP6, which is Sorensen or Spark codec, Sorensen 3 that is. That is just about on every computer that has access to the web at this point. But H.264 is very, very close behind it. Also, the types of movie readers you would need for H.264 would be like QuickTime Movies and then Windows Media Viewer, I believe, can also read H.264 files. If you're working on an older PC, chances are, and actually if you're working on a Mac, you've got the ability to export to a codec called Synpack and another codec called AVI. Those are both very old codecs actually created by Microsoft, and Microsoft themselves have quit using AVI and have shifted over completely to the Windows Media Video format because of its superior quality and compression size as compared to the AVI and Synpack. And we'll take a look at that, especially when we're demonstrating lossy versus lossless compression. The last thing is that you may be exporting these animations for use on the web, whether it's just for fun through YouTube, whether you're working with an agency and are creating the next viral campaign. There are certain things you can get away with with the flash animation that's just outstanding with Anime Studio Pro. There's some new and enhanced features they've added to Anime Studio Pro, and it makes your ability to uh, shave some time off the deadline great. So with that said, let's hop into our next movies and take a look at some of those animation styles.